In this video, we're going to prove a theorem about interactions between images and preimages. First, let's recall the definition of image and preimage. So if f is a function from a to b, and s is a subset of a, then we can define the image of s under f of x. Uh, the image of s under f of x is denoted f of s, and it's defined to be all of the y and b, so that for some x in s, f of x is equal to y. Right, the preimage of a subset T of B, the preimage of T under F of X is defined to be the set of all X in A, so that F of X is an element of T. One important note is that the preimage notation there does not imply that the function F has an inverse. Okay, this is the notation for the preimage of a set, regardless of whether or not the function F has an inverse. And then we have this theorem that we proved in an earlier video, and we're going to use this theorem in our proof below. This theorem states that if f is a function from a to b, and s is a subset of a, and t is a subset of b, then two things hold. First, if little s is an element of the set big S, then f of s, the value f of s, is an element of the image of s under f. And two, uh, s is an element of the preimage of t, if and only if f of s is an element of t. Okay? And these statements 1 and 2 clearly follow um, immediately from the definitions of image and preimage, uh, but for that proof you can see the earlier video. So the theorem we're going to prove today in this video is the following. Let f be a function from a to b. First, if s is a subset of the domain of f, then s is a subset of the preimage of the image of s. Second, if t is a subset of b, the codomain, then the image of the preimage of t is a subset of t. Third, if f is injective, then for any subset s of the domain of f, s is equal to the preimage of the image of s. Okay, so compare that to part one. And then four, which should be compared to part two, uh, if f is surjective, then for any subset t, of the codomain B, the image of the preimage of T is equal to T. Okay, five, if F is bijective, then for all subsets S of A and T of B, S is equal to the preimage of the image of S, and T is equal to the image of the preimage of T. So we're going to prove parts one through four. Notice that part five immediately follows from parts three and four because um, if we have a bijective function, as in 5, then we know it's injective and we know it's surjective. So s is equal to the preimage of the image of s, and t is equal to the image of the preimage of t. Okay, so let's get started proving parts 1 through 4. Um, to begin the proof of part 1, let's let a be a function from, let's let f be a function from a to b. Here, our goal is to prove that if s is a subset of the domain of f, then S is a subset of the preimage of the image of S. So let S, assume that S is a subset of the domain of F. And let's assume that little s is an element of the set big S. So our goal here is to prove that little s is an element of the preimage of the image of S. Okay. Now, the important thing about S being a subset of the domain of the function is that any element of s is also in the domain of the function. So little s is an element of the domain of f. And what that means is it means that f of s is defined. Okay, so the function f assigns a value to s. That value f of s, we know, is an element of the image of s under f. That's by the previous theorem. And since f of s is an element of the image of s under f, it follows from the definition of the preimage, or that previous theorem if you like, that S is going to be an element of the preimage of f of S. All right. So that proves part one. We've just proved that S is a subset of the preimage of the image of S. So now let's prove part two. So let's suppose that f is a function from A to B. Here our goal is to prove that if T is any subset of B, then the image of the preimage of t is a subset of t. So assume that t is a subset of b. 
and let's let little t be an element of the image of the preimage of t. Okay, now from the definition of the image of a set, the image of the preimage of t is going to be all y and b, so that for some x in the preimage of t, f of x is equal to y. Okay, so t is one of these things. So that means there is something in the preimage of t, so that f of that thing is equal to t. All right. So let's choose it out of the preimage of t and call it s. All right. So by that definition, there exists an s in the preimage of t, so that f of s is equal to t. Now s is in the preimage of t, okay, and so that means that f of s is an element of t, right? In other words, t is an element of t. Right, but that's exactly what we wanted to prove, right? So we just proved that if t is an element of the image of the preimage of t, then that little t is an element of the set big T. Right? So that exactly proves that implies that the image of the preimage of t is a subset of t. So now let's prove part three. Suppose f is a function. So our goal here is to prove that if f is injective, then for any subset S of the domain of F, S is equal to the preimage of the image of S. So let's assume F is injective. Let's assume S is a subset of the domain of the function F. And let's assume that S is an element of the preimage of the image of S. Okay? So we're going to prove that S is little s is an element of the set big S. Okay, since S is an element of the preimage of the image of S, it follows that f of s is an element of the image of s. That's just from the previous theorem or the definition of preimage. Okay, so what that means, since f of s is an element of the image of s under f, if you look at the definition of the image of s under f, it means there's something in s, let's call it s prime, so that f of s prime is equal to f of s. Okay, so we don't know initially that it's going to be s. However, we do know that the function's injective. Okay? So s is equal to s prime, and that implies, since we know s prime is an element of s, that proves that s is an element of s. Okay, so this proves that the preimage of the image of s is a subset of s. By part one, we know that s is a subset of the preimage of the image of s. And so combining these two, we can conclude that s is equal to the preimage of the image of s. So now let's prove part four. Let's assume that f is a function from a to b. Here we want to prove that if f is surjective, then for any subset t of b, the image of the preimage of t is equal to t. Okay, so let's assume that f is surjective. And let's suppose that t is a subset of b. Okay. Now by part two, remember, we know that the image of the preimage of t is a subset of t. Okay. So we're going to have to show, in order to prove this statement, that t is a subset of the image of the preimage of t. So let t, little t, be an element of the set big T. All right. So already we'll use our hypothesis um, that f is surjective. Right. So since f is surjective, we know that um, every element of the codomain is in the range is in the range okay t is in the codomain so t is in the range that means there exists some s in a so that f of s is equal to t now since f of s is an element of t uh, we know that that means that s is an element of the preimage of t okay f of s which is equal to little t is an element of the set big T. So S is an element of the preimage of T. Okay? And that exactly means though that F of S, which is equal to T, is an element of the image of the preimage of T. Alright? So that proves um, that T is a subset of the image of the preimage of T. We've just proved that if little t is an element of T, big T, then it's an element of the image of the preimage of T. So big T is a subset of the image of the preimage of T. So combining that with part two, we know that they're equal. All right. So if f of x is a surjective function, 
then t is equal to the image of the preimage of t. So that concludes the proof of uh, this theorem. Remember the fifth part uh, about bijective just follows immediately from parts three and four. And this theorem does have one corollary I'd like to mention. Um, if f is a function from a to b and g is a function from b to a, the following holds. If s is a subset of a and t is a subset of b, and if we happen to know that g is the inverse of f, then the following four things hold. The preimage of t under f is equal to the image of t under g. The preimage of s under g is equal to the image of s under f. Okay. Um, the image under g of the image of s under f is equal to s. And the image of g of t under f is equal to t. Right? So if you think about these statements for a little bit, um, they're exactly how you would expect images and preimages to behave when you have a function and its inverse working together. Uh, but it's just nice to have this as an explicit corollary that we can refer to later. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.